call uh, uh, Joan A. Naylor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a pleasure to rise and take a call on this, the third reading of the New Zealand Flag Referendums Bill. Um, as a third reading, it's a great opportunity to reflect on some of the arguments that have been made during the uh, first reading, the uh, second reading committee, the whole House Select Committee, and uh, what's already been said in the third reading. Um, I just got to pick up for a start, though, on the sort of the last comment that uh, Mr. O'Rourke made in the previous speech, where he was inciting, I guess, civil disobedience in some way, shape, or form, encouraging people to spoil voting papers or not to vote at all. I hope that he does remember to tell them, to, to, if they're not going to vote the first one, to make sure they do vote in the second one. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there's been some really interesting. Uh, sort of arguments put forward um, as to why people should vote this down, and I want to reflect on some of them. Um, the first one that has been brought up a lot has been the order of the questions, people suggesting we should have a yes or no vote first, and this was uh, put forward in the Committee of the Whole House um, by a number of members, but possibly most eloquently the other day by uh, Chris Farfoy, who likened choosing a new flag to having a new car. Uh, his uh, argument was that if you were going to get an, another car, you should decide whether or not you want another car first before deciding what kind you wanted. And I was reflecting on this, and I thought, I, you know, I was thinking of my wife, Suzuki Swift, and uh, if somebody said, uh, do you want another car, she might say, well, yes, um, but it'll depend on what it would be. Because if someone was offering her a brand new uh, Lamborghini, the answer might be yes. If someone was offering her a, a 1972 Ford Cortina, the answer might be no. And, uh, and so I think it's really important that uh, we do get these questions in the right order. And this is the right order to have them in. It is the most logical. Because by having the referendum split across two referendums and putting them in this order allows absolutely everybody to participate. If you do not want a change to the New Zealand flag, you can still choose a potential alternative, or you can not vote if that's what you want to do in the first referendum. Then the second referendum will decide which of those things you want. Now, if you definitely want to change, you get to participate. If you definitely don't want change, you get to participate. But if you ask the yes, no question first, all those people who are saying it depends on what the options are will be excluded from the debate. Now, Mr O'Rourke says he wants everyone to participate. Everyone will get to participate. And if they choose to only participate in the second referendum, that's OK. That's their business. Because the first referendum is subservient to the second referendum. Now, the other thing that's been said, and um, Mr O'Rourke mentioned a number of times in the Committee of the Whole House about how gormless the alternatives were. He used the words today, gaudy and ugly, and that they were all uh, put in this category. And I find that a little bit disturbing, because one of the arguments that has been put forward is uh, this flag is the flag that New Zealand soldiers died under and fought under. Well, actually, a whole heap of those alternative designs that have been put forward have got the silver fern on them. Well, I can tell uh, Mr O'Rourke that actually if you want to uh, not have a sense of, of, uh, of right uh, dealings with people who died for New Zealand, if you have a look at every New Zealand war grave, there is a silver fern on that. And so to refer to the silver fern as gormless uh, or gaudy or ugly, I think uh, is a whole lot more disrespectful than what else has been uh, talked about in this, uh, this argument as we've gone through. The other thing that's been really interesting is to, be, to observe um, the Labour Party's approach to this debate. Now, at least it was quite good in the Committee of the Whole House the other day. Uh, Mr Lees Galloway finally, because um, not many of them have been willing to do it, admitted that it was the Labour Party policy going into the last election to change the flag. Um, we did invite him to read out what it said, and he declined, so I'll do it for the House right now, because this says this. It says, Labour will, Labour will review the design of the New Zealand flag involving flag design experts and with full public consultation and involvement. So that's OK. And they were talking about that, and, and, and that's all right. But, it, but the argument that he put forward, and it's been put forward again by um, uh, Mr Robertson today, saying defer it for five years, and, uh, and Mr Mallard was referring that perhaps we defer it further. Um, that's kind of interesting, because if you read the next line in the Labour Party policy, it says, 
We believe that the time has come for a change. It doesn't say, we believe that in five years' time the time might come. Their policy says, their Labour Party's policy says, we believe that the time has come for a change. And so I think that's kind of fascinating. Um, and the other, the other thing that they keep talking about too, you see, is that it's a vanity project. Vanity project of the Prime Minister. Oh, it's vanity. Oh, it's, it's all down to the vanity of the Prime Minister as to why we're doing this now. Well, when somebody, as I said the other day, put this in the Labour Party policy, whose vanity was it then? Because that's what they're telling us. It's all about vanity. It's all about vanity. And so it was in the Labour Party policy, whose vanity was it then? The other thing that's been really interesting, during the 2014 campaign, their then leader, I keep losing track, but their then leader, Mr David Cunliffe, kept accusing the National Party of stealing Labour Party policies. And so now we have got a bill before us right now that is absolutely in black and white or red and white if you print it off in colour, Labour Party policy, and they want to vote against it. I don't understand it. There is no logic, but that's the Labour Party for you. Um, but anyway, so what we've heard from uh, Mr O'Rourke already, we've heard from the Labour Party today again is the Prime Minister's got it wrong. This will be the end of the Prime Minister. He's forcing something on the people that they don't want. Well, my guess that I would say is that normally uh, what they're saying is, is that we don't like the Prime Minister and we want to see him fall over. So if you're so convinced this is a bad idea and that you want to get rid of the National Party and you want to get rid of the Prime Minister, then I dare you to vote for this bill. Because that's what you're saying is completely illogical. So uh, get behind it, vote for it if you're so convinced this is a bad idea and will be the undoing of the National Party. Uh, Mr Speaker, what is this bill about? This bill is about, for the first time in New Zealand's history, the first time, we've had three flags before, they've all been chosen by the government of the day or by others, but for the first time, New Zealanders will get to choose what their national emblem is, what their New Zealand flag is. They will get to choose. They may well choose the 1902 flag, the current flag that we have now, and that will be their democratic right. But this party, Mr Speaker, the, New, the National Party of New I'm Zealand, so is absolutely keen to ensure that New Zealanders will get their say, that they will get to decide what is important to them, and I'm looking forward to passing their bill so that we can take this out of the political domain of this House, put it into the hands of the people of New Zealand where it belongs. Uh, the next call is a split call.